Good day and welcome to the WANA webinar series. As you will notice, all participants have been muted. If you have to ask a question, please send your question into the Q&A panel located in the bottom right-hand side of your screen or by pressing the three-dot option along the bottom and selecting the Q&A panel. Your question will be answered after the presentation. If you have any technical issues, please send a private chat to the host, the directions of which you can find in the chat window. Thank you for joining and please welcome Michael Hamlin, a member of Fountain House. Welcome to the latest in our WANA webinar series. We've titled this one Digital Inclusion, Clubhouses Expanding Access to Digital Communication and Opportunity. We have two groups presenting today, Jeffrey Jean and Eric Flanagan from the Academy at Glengarry in Florida, and Sarah Call and Oliver Wilhelmsen from the Swedish Clubhouse Coalition. Several years ago, Fountain House identified the need for digital video communication across the internet and invested in a digital platform, Cisco WebEx, and created a project, The Learning Exchange, which aims to build community and strengthen our networks and empower members and even staff to increase or gain digital skills, become familiar with the latest technology, and access new innovations and tools for overcoming adversity and just build life skills, which is why I've always been passionate about the movement of digital inclusion, digital awareness, building digital skills, for its unlimited potential to help us innovate, build, and create. I envision a digitally inclusive world where our senior members can stay connected to the community no matter where they are, be it a nursing home or just no longer able to make it in. I envision a digitally inclusive world where clubhouses are regularly sharing ideas and collaborating. Members from all over the world getting to relate and connect and share their lives, perspectives, and experiences. People learning to use new tools to solve problems and increase their access to opportunity. And so today, in continuing us on this journey to a new world for the clubhouse movement, We'll hear from the Academy at Glengarry, who will look at what you can do at the individual clubhouse level and talk about how you can start to think about increased digital awareness in your clubhouse and implement some basic technology to get members and staff connected and creating. The Swedish Clubhouse Coalition will present on a project that aims to bring together multiple clubhouses and coalitions across Sweden and Northern Europe. With a, goal, with a goal of digital skill building. It's a macro level project and quite innovative. We're excited for its potential in Scandinavia and across the whole of Europe. So let's get started. Jeffrey, Eric. Yes, hi, thank you so much, uh, Michael, for that uh, great introduction. Um, so yes, my name is Jeffrey Jean. Um, good morning and good afternoon. I'm the program coordinator here at the Academy at Glengarry, a clubhouse in Sarasota, Florida. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to give a short bio about myself. Uh, my name is Eric Flanagan. I've been a member here at the Academy for a little over a year now. And uh, the goal in my recovery journey was always to return to full-time employment. Uh, so when I heard about the clubhouse network and I looked into it a little bit more and I saw that the Academy at Glengarry was fairly local to me. Uh, I knew I had to go in there and uh, look into it and see what it was all about. Uh, I found out about the work order day, how that was structured, and uh, I decided that it would be a really great place for me to build up my stamina and brush off my skills to return to the workplace. Thank you, Eric, for sharing that. Um, uh, and before we just begin, I just wanted to just say that we are uh, honored to be a part um, of this webinar and to be invited to just share with the Clubhouse community. Yeah, and so today we would like to, about to talk about the concept of digital inclusion, and we hope to share ideas and resources that we have found helpful uh, during our journey navigating the pandemic as a Clubhouse. So digital inclusion. Um, where do we start um, is one of the questions that we've asked ourselves along with uh, what technology do we need? What devices do we need? Where will we get the funding? 
Um, so these questions, like many other clubhouses, uh, we asked ourselves as COVID-19 began to impact our community. Just to give you a brief context of our clubhouse, we closed in March of 2020 for about two months, uh, and we were completely virtual. And then in May, we reopened uh, and offered a hybrid work order day uh, where members had the opportunity to either participate online virtually um, or on-site uh, at their choosing. And we soon began to realize uh, that now more than ever, we are dependent on the use of technology to keep our clubhouse connected. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the vision of digital inclusion? Uh, the vision is to enable us to carry on the mission of the clubhouse. And regardless of the situation we might find ourselves in currently, the main goal and purpose of the clubhouse remains the same, community, work, recovery. Uh, and here in the picture, we can see some of our folks, which have Ben, uh, Kevin, and Patty doing a live cooking demonstration where members were able to watch from home and uh, participate in that. And next slide, please. So what are the key components of digital conclusion? Um, and they're as follows, uh, equipment, uh, so the hardware, whether that be the computers or the cameras or the uh, the tablets or the smartphones. Um, the other component uh, is also the software. So the apps, uh, the, the programs that you need on your computers to be able to find a way to keep members connected. And then also uh, a very important uh, aspect is the skills and training of members and staff so that they uh, can understand and feel comfortable with using this technology uh, and, and use it to feel included. Um, really briefly, you'll just see uh, in this photo that we have, um, it, it, it shows kind of those key components all coming together. So this is, this is Ben, and he just uh, connected to our morning meeting. And as Michael said, uh, as part of this new world in, in many clubhouses, uh, the morning meeting is virtual. So uh, he's on site at the academy, but he set up the, the meeting and he's able to uh, get on Zoom and pull up uh, the PowerPoint that we need. So you see the hardware, the software, and the skills all coming together uh, in that picture right there. Uh, next slide, please. So challenges. Early on, we quickly discovered some of the inherent challenges to ensuring digital inclusion for every member. Funding, so obviously a big one there. Uh, the available budget for technology is going to be vital in determining what technologies can be used. Uh, fear or apprehension of technology. It, technology can be really intimidating, you know, and it's changing constantly, all the time. And so that uh, keeping up with that can be almost impossible, and that can be uh, a hurdle for people getting connected. So the pandemic took the entire world by surprise. There was no plan laid out, no roadmap to follow, and uh, it, it can be a real challenge for people who suddenly find themselves self-isolating. So as far as skill level goes, uh, between members and staff, there can be a wide varying of abilities and comfort levels with the technology, and getting everyone working with potentially new hardware and or software can be pretty difficult. And following on that, hardware or software, there's such a vast array of technologies, it can be hard to know where to go to find the most bang for your buck to fill in the gaps to increase digital inclusion. And finally, tying all that together, knowing what to purchase, uh, knowing what technologies you can acquire to get all the members feeling like they're back in the clubhouse and working in their units. Next slide, please. So we wanted to just briefly just share some strategies um, and just some thoughts of, of things that have, have, have worked for us and obviously it's going to be different for each clubhouse. But um, one of the first strategies, strategies is just to start from where you are. Uh, take an assessment of your current infrastructure, your uh, devices and your software that you already have uh, and the ideas that you already have and just start from there. Um, so using that as, as a beginning point and taking just small steps, taking small steps to develop a plan, um, whatever that might look like for your clubhouse. Um, 
Another thing which is extremely important is using your existing talent and identifying Clubhouse champions to drive the initiative. So there might be some members or staff who are comfortable with technology or who are tech savvy themselves and who may actually enjoy being able to interact with the technology and, and figure things out and finding out those folks and making them, creating a space for them to want to be a part of figuring things out with, with the clubhouse. Um, and really, many times that can just be a fun thing. Um, I'll just share briefly for myself and, and Eric, as in our own clubhouses, we've been trying to figure, figure, figure things out. Um, it's, it's been exciting, it's been fun. It's been challenging at times, of course, um, but it's, it's, it's really great to just try to uh, find a way to keep members connected and included. Um, another, another strategy is if there maybe isn't uh, a tech savvy or IT guru inside of your clubhouse, seek outside expertise. Um, so if it's not a member or staff, there might be somebody on your board of directors or your board of directors may know someone. Um, we're, we were fortunate uh, in our situation where there is uh, someone who's an IT director at one of our transitional employment sites. And uh, he was gracious enough to volunteer his time and really help us uh, get things underway. So um, as far as with servers and with networks, so uh, you never know, there might be some outside expertise that you can find. And lastly, and most importantly, uh, engaging funders with concrete solutions. Um, so developing a clear and concise plan to present to funders is one of the first steps. Um, so being able to answer some questions such as, what technology do you need? How will it benefit your members? How will you implement it? So having answers to those questions go a long way in giving funders the confidence in uh, wanting to be a part of your mission. And we learned that some funders were eager to support efforts during COVID. Um, so it's important to build on those funding relationships that already exist. Next slide, please. So some free or cost-effective solutions. Uh, so now we're gonna share some solutions that we've become aware of during this uh, pandemic. So everyone knows about Facebook, uh, and it can be a great way to keep your community up to date about what's going on. Uh, through creating a private group just for your clubhouse. Um, and Slack is a program that we use here all the time, every day. It's very important, very powerful for us. Uh, we use it to organize unit tasks, uh, inform the community of news, meetings, and events that might take place. And the plan we use is completely free. It allows up to 10,000 messages and 5 gigs of storage space. Uh, with a Google account, uh, everyone has free access to forms that provide functionality the same that you would find in Microsoft Office, uh, such as spreadsheets or presentation software. And Google Drive also gives you a way to share and send files uh, with no cost at all. Uh, a lot of folks will have access to a smartphone, a computer, or a tablet, and they can use those to stay connected to their clubhouse and be included in the work order day. Um, if they don't, the clubhouse can also provide that sort of technology to them so that they're able to participate remotely and safely. Uh, one solution that we found uh, for sharing on PC is called Remote PC, and they do have a variety of plans available, uh, and they are running a discount right now, so Right now, you can connect up to 50 computers at a price of $187 per year, where normally it is $250 per year. Uh, next slide, please. So we wanted to spend some time and hopefully uh, uh, show, uh, show some videos about what this can look like in the work order day. Um, so how does this all come together? The, the, the hardware, the software, the skills, the, the training, um, and so what does this look like on a day-to-day -day basis in the units? Um, so uh, we, we're going to just show a, a few videos just to give you an example of, of what it looks like at our clubhouse. Um, but uh, one of the things to definitely talk about is how do you maintain that side-by-side -side philosophy of clubhouses, which is really integral to what we do of members and staff working side-by-side. -side. 
And one of the one of the uh, options, as Eric mentioned, is screen sharing, uh, which we have found that, which is free on, on on Macs. And then through a monthly or annual subscription, like Remote PC, you can do on a piece uh, on a Windows PC. And also sharing documents uh, with members who are working virtually uh, through Microsoft OneDrive or Google Google Drive or other cloud-based services. And of course, uh, as Michael said, in the new world, uh, many of us are aware of Zoom and WebEx. Um, so those are just some of the options. And so we wanted to just give a little bit of an idea of what that would look like. So we just have two videos that we're going to show back to back. One is uh, a screen sharing on a Mac and the other is screen sharing on a PC. So if you could please play those. Well, with COVID-19, we want to make sure that we keep our social distancing. And with the Mac computers, we're able to do that fairly easily through screen sharing. So I'm going to show you how we share our screen. And Garrett over here is at the other computer, socially distanced, of course. Now I'll show you how to do it on the Mac. It's very simple. No special software is required. Let's go to the Go menu, click on Network, find the number of the Mac you would like to share the screen with. And Jared is at number three. And we do have it set up, so we have to put in the administrator user and password. So we'll click on Connect. And there we are. We're now connected. I can see the screen that Garrett has up right now. And we can both work on things together. So Garrett, did you want to learn how to make a box oh, yeah. in InDesign? All right. So over in your toolbar on the left-hand side, you can kind of see where my mouse is. Uh, click on this shape box down here with your mouse. There you go. And then come over to the document, and then you'll click, hold the mouse, and drag, and make a box. Why don't you go ahead and try? Click, hold, and drag. Excellent. And that's how easy it is to share your screen on the Mac. So good morning. I'm Paul Henneke. I'm a member here at the Academy. and. Uh, we do our own bookkeeping through a, a program called QuickBooks, and what we're going to show in this video is uh, how I can work side by side with Rima, and she can learn QuickBooks um, on a different PC uh, with social distancing being appropriate using Remote PC as the program that we use to do that. Sure. So to reuse Remote PC, what Rima did was uh, she logged in to the uh, to Remote PC with the email and I password, and then she found my PC, which is number nine, and click connect, and then you can see that now she has what is showing on my PC. So she's basically mirroring my PC. So uh, Rima, that first one on the bottom is actually the uh, every two week payroll of the staff. And so if I click in there, you see um, there's a little journal entry two thirty seven. Okay, so those are those are those tie out. So you could actually do me a favor and see that match button. Next to the seventeen thousand dollars, the yeah. blue match. Click that match. Okay, sure. All right, so now we've entered that into the into QuickBooks. We've accepted. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, so that again was just a, a little brief overview of, of what it might look like. Um, and so please uh, go to the next slide, please. Okay, so Clubhouse owned devices. Uh, these are uh, technologies we use here at the Clubhouse. Uh, we use tablets that. Are that we equip with uh, apps and internet access, uh, such as Zoom, Slack, and Microsoft Office. Uh, the tablets can also be used as a phone via an app, so we can uh, communicate with the member uh, by voice. And uh, with those, we got those uh, an initial investment of $150 each for the tablets as well as Microsoft Office. And we also provide internet access for those devices at $20 a month. Uh, and in the picture here, you can see one of our senior members, Carolyn, getting set up on our uh, Clubhouse provided tablet. Uh, so mobile device management. Uh, to increase digital inclusion with those Clubhouse provided tablets, we use uh, an affordable program called Scale Fusion, uh, which is very affordable. It costs between 2 to $4 per device per month. And we use that connect to connect directly to member devices to assist them in completing tasks or even giving a tutorial on some functionality or an app that they might need help with. 
And right now we're going to watch a short video of that. And uh, please play video three. So this is Scale Fusion. It's a program that we use to manage uh, all the mobile devices that we have. And we use it to connect with people who are not located here at the academy physically. They're uh, remote, so they could be at their house or anywhere else where they have an internet connection. And we can go in there and we can see what they're doing on their tablet and also help them if they're maybe having some trouble navigating around there. So we're just going to do a little demonstration now. All right, Eric, I found your, uh, your tablet, and I'm going to connect now and start the session with you. Okay, Eric, so we're here uh, at the home screen of your tablet, and uh, I can see what you're doing, but I can also take control of the tablet um, and help you out. So I'm just going to bring up Microsoft Word now. And there it is. I, yep, I open that for him, and then I can also select the blank document so that he can start working on his project. And that's it. Simple and easy. Wow, what a handsome and charming guy that was. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so yes, uh, the other just hardware that we'd also like to briefly talk about is uh, smart boards or interactive display systems, um, which for us have helped kind of bring it all together in terms of uh, our day-to-day. -day. And so these smart boards are actually not computers themselves. Um, they're, they're monitors, uh, but they have the capability of being connected to a computer. And so they are touch screen, and they also allow us to uh, have interactions in real time. And so you'll actually see in the picture here that this is our, our, our member, Ian, and he's uh, facilitating a, a unit meeting. And then there's also some folks who have joined on Zoom. And as he's signing up for tasks, uh, they're able to actually see what he's doing in real time and see the tasks that are available. And they can sign up as well if there's something that they would like to work on from home. Um, and so, uh, a few other points about the smart boards. Uh, as you as, as mentioned, they help us facilitate uh, our our workday. Um, they also help the teams organize and see what tasks have been completed or still need to be done. And so, it's a stationary uh, stationary uh, display. Uh, so it doesn't go anywhere. It's easy to read, and people can refer back to it throughout the day. And it also is very helpful when providing uh, remote technical support. Uh, we have this bigger screen that we can see a person's device and we can help them if they're at home. Um, and just one other video, video four, uh, is just going to just show you a little bit of, a, uh, of how we run the meetings with the smart board. If you could play that, please. So this is how we sign up for jobs here at the Academy. Um, so we use uh, a couple of different technologies. This is called our smart board. Um, and so this smart board really helps us organize different projects throughout the day. And uh, what we have is all of our different tasks for each team is listed out. And this is a touchscreen smart board. And what we also do is we connect to Zoom for members who are uh, working at home virtually so that they can see this, the jobs that are available they can sign up for tasks that they can do from home. So I'm gonna get started with the meeting. So would anybody like to do the afternoon shift and uh, be at the desk this afternoon? Steven? Great, thank you. Awesome. All right, and then let's get moved on to some of our projects. Would anyone like to work on typing and editing the news at noon? See your hand is raised, Naomi? Great, thank you. Thank you so much for showing that video. And uh, yet again, another charming and handsome person in there too. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, okay, if we can go to the next slide, please. And so uh, as we end, we wanted to just talk briefly about some ongoing challenges and opportunities. Um, so challenges that we're, we're running into and that we're still managing and trying to figure out. Um, so uh, one of the ones that has been talked about uh, but wanted to go into more detail is the skill development for members and staff. 
Um, this has been a, quite a challenge, as you can imagine. Um, the need for technical support and training is now a daily challenge because of the integration of more technology into our work order day. Um, so obviously, the more technology we have, the more need there is for assistance. Someone may need help getting on Zoom. Someone might need help accessing the SharePoint or the cloud-based services, um, or there are just internet connection issues. So that's just an ongoing challenge that we face on a daily basis. And what we're hoping to do, what we see as possibly an opportunity, is to find a way to integrate tech support into the work order day. Um, so providing a space for members and staff who are really interested and who are more tech savvy um, to assist other members and, and other staff who maybe are not as comfortable with technology. So you'll just see really briefly in the uh, picture there, so uh, it's actually myself and uh, member uh, Garrett and Ian, and this is actually a picture from the first day when we took the tablets out of the box and we were trying to figure out how to set them up and get them out to the members who would need them for, for, for working with us virtually. Um, and so that's been really, uh, that's just a picture of what we hope to do more and more of is, uh, is inviting members and staff in to uh, help integrate the uh, work order, integrate tech support into the work order day. Um, next slide, please. Um, and so we'd like to close, and uh, as we close, we just have one last video that we'd like to share, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back and say one final comment. Um, so if you could just play the, the last video, video five, please. My name is Naomi Trees. I'm a member of the Academy of Glen Gary, a clubhouse in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Carolyn Robinson, and I'm a member of the Academy at Glen Gary, a clubhouse in Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> Since I got the tablet, I've been able to learn uh, PowerPoint and uh, Microsoft Word and um, other applications and to be able to attend workshops and go to meetings. The opportunity to connect to the clubhouse has helped me to stay connected to the members and staff and not feel left out. You know, some days I would get kind of depressed and bored. And so this has been my go-to at home to really help me not to fall so far behind. Being able to connect virtually is absolutely a lifeline for me. Right now I'm, I'm isolated where I'm living due to the pandemic. And um, if I didn't have the, the work order day, I, I, wouldn't, um, I, I really wouldn't be functioning that well. Okay, so uh, a really powerful video there uh, that really demonstrated the greatest opportunity of digital inclusion. Uh, which is empowering members. So providing members with the tools and the training to feel included, valued, and engaged is really the most important opportunity that has arisen from this global pandemic. So with that, we'd like to end our uh, presentation. Again, thank you so much uh, for giving us this time and, uh, and uh, have, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye everyone. So thank you guys very much for that excellent presentation. I think it's really important to uh, to look at where to remember where we can all where these new innovations can all take us together. And I think it's really important to to remember some things that you mentioned in your presentation that um, you know we can we can start small and take small steps and to remember to keep things. Um, um, accessible um, and open for people. So I, I thank you both. Thank you. So Sarah and Oliver, you're up next. Thank you so much, Michael, and thank you to Glenn Gary. It was so inspiring to uh, to listen to. And um, yeah, I think both me and Oliver can agree that we we recognize many of the things you described, but also very inspiring for our work. Um, so we're going to present our project today. Um, we have a PowerPoint we would like to share with you. Um, and this project will be uh, explained more like a, an overview of how many clubhouses can collaborate 
with a digital inclusion. And uh, uh, my name is Sarah and I am the project manager for the Swedish Clubhouse Coalition. And with me I have... My name is Oliver and I'm a member on the front of Bosta and a member of on this project from the very beginning. Yes. And uh, we would like to start by just giving you the outline of the project and how it got started. And uh, <clears throat> so this is a three-year project which is partially funded by the European Social Fund. And the European Social Fund focuses on to making uh, European citizens involved and included in the work labor market, regardless of their abilities or um, maybe disabilities. Uh, so, so they are a great support in this project. We are currently 12 clubhouses out of 13 active in the project. Uh, we have two researchers who follow up on the project and will evaluate the results. And I would love to share the three purposes of how this pro what we want this project to be about. Uh, we want to increase members' digital skill and improve employability. On an organizational level, we want to build networking channels within the Swedish and the Nordic clubhouse coalitions, but also, of course, expand into Europe and all over the world. But to, to keep it in the framework of this project to, to create networking channels. Uh, create a more solid organization that get more credibility in the design of mental health rehabilitation on a national and international level. So that is the more macro perspective of the project that we want to achieve through this collaboration. Next slide, please. So how did this come about? Well, this started uh, almost exactly a year ago uh, when we all, uh, we, we, we were introduced uh, by Fountain House New York and the Learning Exchange Project to an organization called TechSoup Europe. And uh, TechSoup is an NGO that is supporting other NGOs to help install and implementing technical solutions. And they provide discounted prices for software as they are sponsored by big tech companies to support NGOs in digital skills and training. And it's through this collaboration that TechSoup were able to support the clubhouse in Helsingborg to become the educators for the Swedish clubhouses in the platform's WebEx teams and WebEx meetings. So TechSoup is available for any NGO, just so you know that all the clubhouses in the world can approach TechSoup and look at what they can offer, uh, discounted software, hardware maybe, and training also. We were speaking about digital skills lacking in the clubhouses, and TechSoup can be an amazing support for that. So I just want to, to share that with you. Uh, next slide, please. So, like I said, this started a year ago, almost exactly, in the World of Norway. We had our first planning meeting. We had representatives from all the Nordic countries, uh, except Iceland and Faroe Islands. Uh, and uh, we also had TechSoup in position in Norway to, to have the first sit down and share what we wanted to do with a digital collaboration project. And uh, the original idea was that each country focuses on their own digi inclusion project. Uh, how it panned out is that Sweden was the only country who received a grant or funding for such a project uh, and were able to hire uh, me as a project manager. And then we have a project assistant who is a member in the clubhouse in Helsingborg also. Um, so, but then the pandemic hit, so, so everyone in the Nordic countries started their own journey uh, because they had to, basically. But we were the only country who had funding to uh, specify the project. Um, the project went into operational phase in January in 2020. And like I said, the clubhouse in Helsingborg became the digital training hub in Sweden. And the original plan was to have every clubhouse in Sweden go to a two-day training on site. And we managed to, uh, to give five clubhouses that on-site training uh, in the platforms, WebEx teams and WebEx meetings. And then the pandemic hit and we had to 
we reformed the project into an online training. Uh, so now almost all clubhouses have received the training. I think we have a couple left uh, due to the delay because we had to convert to an online training. Uh, we also have weekly meetings with all the clubhouses in Sweden and also Orland is included in those meetings because they are, even they are, though they are Finnish coalition, they are Swedish speaking. So they have a language barrier with their coalition, which we could provide uh, a Swedish uh, meeting every week. And we also have arranged weekly meetings with all the clubhouse directors. And that is a big, big shift for communication between the clubhouses in Sweden. Uh, and we also have seen new networks between clubhouses start to grow organically online and using the WebEx uh, platform for those collaborations. Next slide, please. And now I would love to uh, give the word to Oliver, who is a very eager participant in the project to share his experience. Thank you, Sarah. So, there's several positive experiences with this project, but the most important one for me would be the, my path to self-improvement. When I first came to Fontenot for four years ago, I did not like talking with strangers. I couldn't talk in front of strangers, so I'm part of a group. And through years, I've improved a lot. I've, people came to our house, I created them, I showed them around. Bigger groups started coming, I did it. And I was, okay, planning. I'm going to go out, visit the schools, visit the whole presentations. The COVID hit. But then I got the opportunity to be here. So just being here is just showing, showing you this opportunity to big steps to self-improvement. But it's also helped a lot with my distance study. Quite recently, I started studying again, and with COVID, a lot of the options are only the only options are at distance. And at every course, there's parts, or maybe just one part, that needs the com digital communication with the teacher. And if I didn't have that, just the last biggest part of the project would be just been, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to be super nervous. But as I'm already used to it, yeah, that's been fine. This has also helped me improve like, quite a few of my distant relationships. I have a few family friends in the U.S. that throughout this proje project and my experience with the digital media, I now have contact with them at least once a week. And it's been great. I couldn't do it without just, it can't really just talk on a phone without seeing them. It's not the same thing, but just having a face-to-face -face conversation helps a lot. And it's helped me a lot with creating new relationships and new contacts. Now I have faces and names in every clubhouse here in Sweden. So if I ever want to visit, I, okay, I want someone I'm a bit familiar with. Okay, I'm going to call Tony in Lund. And that's a very big step and very good thing to know. Next slide, please. But... There's quite a few challenges, a lot like Glenberry mentioned, this kind of, we have, have experienced quite a few of them ourselves. It's easier to mobilize in larger clubhouses, with a lot of clubhouse champions to keep the project going, but in the smaller clubhouses, it can be a very big challenge. You lack people that's interested in it, people are, it's something new, they don't want to learn it. And if, if you don't have any staff or director that's already put into it and already knows it, it just falls to the side. And that's quite notable here. Bigger houses, yeah, they have some clubhouse champions that keep the project going, but the smaller houses, very few members that are actually active. And that came since that Lambert mentioned the vulnerability regarding staff's attitude toward technology and support from the clubhouse director. If you don't have it, yeah, it's most likely going to be a very few people that's going to keep it going, or maybe at all. And then there's the lack of technical devices and technical skills. We've started a project, it's going good. We introduced people at the clubhouses, but the pandemic hit, and a lot of the older members that needed this the most self-isolated. We couldn't reach out to them, we couldn't teach them at distance and try to get them, oh, download this app so we can teach you on distance. They didn't have, didn't have engagement, they didn't have the courage or will to do it. So we're still trying to reach out and teach them, but 
we still, if they don't have the devices, we're very hard to fix it for them. And we're very hard to co-found a project here in Europe. We, one of the things we need is members to report in the time they spent in this project. And a lot of people do not want to do that. You can say, yeah, we are not going to use your name or anything about from anywhere else. But a lot of people are very skeptical to it. And that's a very big hurdle for them to step over for them to enter. I believe next slide. But there are quite big benefits for the people that go into the project. They increase digital skill and relaxation for digital setting for members. People have easier time to start to speak with new people over the internet. They increase networking between the clubhouses. As Sarah mentioned, we have meeting between clubhouse staff and the clubhouse chiefs and a few members every week. And it's great. Cooperation discussion between clubhouse directors. Big news happens in some house. Every, every house knows it immediately. Instead of just hearing about it from a few weeks later, oh, that clubhouse director left. Oh, I was planning to visit, but now maybe not. In increase information and learning exchange. We have a lot more opportunities to share skills and experiences with each other right now than we ever had before. And Increase reflections amongst members regarding their own clubhouses in contrast to other clubhouses. What works for us? What works for others? What can we share to improve everyone else? And what can we improve on? There's a lot of things to think about, and having, just having the op option is great. And next slide. And I believe this is you, Sarah. That is correct. Thank you, Oliver, so much. It's been uh, so amazing to see your development in this project and also congratulations on your studies. That's amazing. And uh, I guess that's the same all over, over, all over the world that schools are closing down and studying has to be on a distance with a video. And um, we know how challenging it can be for anyone. So, so we're really grateful that this project is here. Um, so the future of the Digi Inclusion project in Sweden, uh, luckily we were able to go on. We've been, like Oliver shared about the, the challenges has been the co-funding because it's a bureaucratic reporting system with social security numbers that members are not very comfortable sharing and uh, unused, unused to, to, to just uh, having to report on their progress. Um, or, or participation. Uh, so that has been challenging to get the finances together for this project, but we managed to revise our budget. So we were approved to, to keep going for the next two years. So we're now hosting workshops with the project uh, to plan the next phase. And uh, what that entails will probably be to package what we created so far in a creative and simple way in order to make it easier to people to engage in the digital platform. And also we expanded um, now the definition uh, project to include Zoom and Microsoft Teams or other digital platforms because we see they are needed. And we, we, we see that now everyone has a base in WebEx and the knowledge in WebEx. So now we can move on to to creating more online trainings for other platforms, maybe. We also want to create a solid method and model to how to use digital platforms within Clubhouse specifically, because we are a unique organization and therefore we, we, uh, we need to, to find the best way for us to, to use the digital platforms to grow as an organization and support our members in the best way. Um, we want to create a digital Nordic conference in order to compare experiences from the digital developments in each country. Sweden, we're fortunate to have their clubhouses open and we have developed in one certain way with the WebEx project. Uh, Norway and Finland and Denmark and all the other countries had to close down and like uh, Glengarry also shared that you had to go virtual and there, you, I mean, just imagine how the creativity has, has gone and we want to learn from each other basically on how to, to have, find the champions within the countries to share solid solutions for everyone. And we also want to keep spreading our results so others can copy them. 
because this is why we do it. We want to to be an example on how you can do it. This is not the only way to do it, but we want to share our success stories and we want to increase uh, other organizations also outside of Clubhouse if they're interested. Um, and also I got some ideas while listening to you in Langeri that our development plans for, for uh, the next part of this project will be to also create collaborations with organizations outside of the Clubhouse universities, authorities, and uh, also create more online trainings. Uh, and we were really inspired by the devices that you have for supporting people from home with, um, with controlling their tablets and computers and supporting them and still keeping a distance. So it was really inspiring. And uh, we thank you for the time we have had here. And Thank you for listening. Wow. Thank you both so much. Um, that was that was excellent. All I can just say is I'm just so inspired for the future of our digital clubhouse movement. Um, I, I especially want to thank Oliver. His I think his contribution was really meaningful for me. I was especially impressed. I, I also want to say the comment about um, uh, noticing our 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 perspective, our clubhouses in contrast to other clubhouses is especially um, meaningful for me. I think that's important as we like connect with other clubhouses around the world, the way that we're able to do this in the digital environment. I think that's so meaningful because we get to learn from each other and see how other clubhouses operate and we can like then think about our own clubhouse and that gives us a unique sort of perspective to think about, oh, how, how do we operate? How do we function? And look at another clubhouse and see how they function. And it sort of opens us up. So that was a really important um, point to make. So again, thank you both. Um, and so now um, we can go to uh, our question, question and answer session. They would like to ask, please submit your questions in the Q&A panel located in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, or by pressing the three dot option along the bottom and selecting the Q&A panel. Your first question is, can you do screen sharing with members who are at home or only on computers that are inside the club? Uh, screen sharing. So that sounds like a good question for uh, Jeffrey and Eric. Yeah, yeah. So um, I believe the question was, can you do screen sharing with members who are at home? Um, do you want to? Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. That's uh, really the most powerful way uh, that we have, you know, members who don't feel comfortable or because they might be uh, compromised in some way to coming physically, we can absolutely connect with them if they're at home or if they're really any other location where they might have a, a good internet connection, we can connect with them. And I'll just add briefly um, in that video uh, that Eric was, was showing the demonstration. Uh, so that member at that time uh, was on the phone with Eric, but that member was at home on their tablet and so Eric was sharing that, uh, was able to see their screen, um, and if they pulled up anything, he would be able to work with them from afar and interact. And, um, and, and, and so that's, that's been a really useful uh, thing for us. Another question is, how enthusiastic are members in participating in this tech revolution? Uh, I think we'll throw that to, I think both groups could answer that, but we'll throw that to Jeffrey and Eric first. Yeah, uh, we've been very enthusiastic. I know for myself, uh, it's been very exciting and interesting learning about uh, all this new stuff. You know, a, a lot of it's very new to me. Um, so getting to work with it and on it, especially with other members, has really been uh, rewarding and uh, pretty exciting for me. Yeah, and I'll just add briefly that you know there are there are some challenges, of course, um, and so uh, for some members who maybe aren't as comfortable with a lot of this new technology, it as we've mentioned before, it, and as uh, uh, as Oliver and Sarah mentioned as well, it takes some getting used to, and so uh, I think people are excited, but at the same time, there are those moments where there's you know there's there's just not that level of comfort yet because for some of our senior members or, or folks who just haven't had that experience with technology, it, it can just be a challenge. Sarah, Oliver? Oliver, do you want to start? 
Yeah, I'm a bit tired right now. I'm... <laughs> okay. Do you want me to take it? Yes, please. Okay, no worries. Um, I think what you just said in Glengarry is is a perfect description of what we experience as well. Um, there are some technical champions who are really on it and, and, and thrive in this new technology, and that creates new tasks for the clubhouse, which is great. But still, there's, we see that there's a lack of organizing and structuring how do we use the technology in the most efficient way and beneficial way. Um, so, so I think that's, that's how we are going to focus on our project in the future, to, to try and simplify it and make it easier for people to access this without uh, actually not even knowing they're going into the technical sphere maybe like it's kind of we can camouflage it a bit like some some members like our senior members or a certain group of our, of our members come into the clubhouse they make their lunch and they they are so happy with that because that's what what their passion is in the clubhouse and their re rehabilitation so how do we like even catch those members to be interested and maybe that could be like culinary ex exchange information via video or something like that to just to kind of lure them in uh, and then oh they realize they've, they've just uh, been in a video conference and and also uh, having a mobile school because many people don't even have like a bank identification on their phone in order to pay their bills or uh, like to start small and start where you are I think that is crucial and we need to organize that and structure that. Um, and what we're trying to do in Sweden, because we're such a small country compared to the US, but we're trying to do that simultaneously with all the clubhouses, so everyone gets the same information at the same time. Can you tell us a little more about how you got started using the smart boards, and if they're difficult to learn, and how to use? Certainly for uh, Jeffrey and Eric. Um, yeah, so uh, as, as far as how we got started with the smart board, um, um, but yeah, so uh, just to give a name or, uh, you know, I think there's different brands out there, but the ones that we use are, are, are from Sharp, um, and they're called Inter Interactive Display Boards. Um, they do cost roughly, depending on where you get them from, 5000 to $10,000. Um, and, and as far as just using them, um, you could, they're, they're a monitor, they're a touchscreen monitor. And then you actually can attach a, a computer to the back of them, or, or there's connections for a computer. Uh, and so as far as uh, using them, once you become comfortable, it really is just a, a monitor just with just additional capabilities. So as you even saw in the video, uh, we're, we're just able to pull up Zoom as if you were on your laptop or as if you were on your computer. And uh, we use for signing up for projects, for example, uh, a free uh, app called uh, Microsoft Whiteboard. Um, and so once, and that allows us the capability to sign up for jobs. Um, so once you, you connect it to a computer, uh, then anything that you would do on a computer, you could do on the smart board, and it just gives you additional capabilities, specifically the, uh, the opportunity to have touch screen. Um, but really, once you connect it, uh, then it, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, I hope that answers the question. I want to jump in real quick, actually, and ask if there's any, do you know of any funding machines that are available for like, offsetting the cost of those smart boards? Because they're kind of expensive. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so really, as we, we talked about, um, as far as just with funding, is just coming up with, uh, you know, developing a, a plan to present to the funders and having smart boards included in your plan, if it's going to be something that's helpful for your clubhouse and that can be implemented and would be useful for the work order day um, and would be exciting for members to engage with technology, uh, I think providing funders with that information, they may see as like, well, this is a very valuable investment. Um, so as far as just any specific uh, funding sources. Um, we're, we're not necessarily aware of a specific one, but using the funding, the funders that you may already know of or that you've already been engaged with or relationships you already have, um, 
I would, uh, we would just say that for us, it's been very useful, specifically in our uh, clubhouse community. And so funders may like to hear that, that this is but something yeah, that- so, so yes, just identifying it as something to your funders that is something that you need. That is, okay, thank you. That is a good answer. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. Our next question is, what would you suggest for a clubhouse coalition that wants to start a digi inclusion project? What would be a good first step? Well, if that's right. Sarah and Oliver. <laughs> yes. Um, I think that a good first step is to to come up with a strategy uh, and reach out to the clubhouses that you want to collaborate with. And uh, like I said, TechSoup has been so such a great support and and I also would encourage to contact uh, the clubhouse the Fountain House New York. To, to get their experience because they were the ones who supported us in initiating this project um, and, and also introducing us to, to TechSoup. So I think um, just have, have video meetings together and planning. Uh, I mean, we had a three month analysis and planning phase for this project to set the, the plan on how we wanted to create the, the trainings, uh, find a clubhouse that is tech savvy and have the champions and make them the education house. They, uh, a clubhouse with the good equipment that can provide a, a qualitative uh, training. Uh, if it's not possible to go physically, then, then find the best way to do it online. And, uh, and we would also be, uh, um, open for support, supporting others who want to do the same uh, journey that we have done. So we hope that our project will, will be a copy-paste model that people can just use and, and use our experiences. Um, and that reminds me, we have to translate it to English <laughs> so that the whole world can, can, can get a benefit of, of uh, our results later. But that, that would be my suggestion. Our next question is for Glenn Gary. How did you get internet for $20 a month? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, specifically for the tablets, um, they were purchased in, in, in bulk. Um, so it was uh, 25 tablets. And because we were purchasing, each tablet has a, uh, has a data plan uh, so that it could have internet. Because they were being purchased in bulk, they were provided at a discounted rate. Um, that's how we were able to get them for that, that low of a price. And it's, it's data only, um, so it's not a calling plan, it's just internet. And for Sarah and Oliver, does the project pay for the members to have internet access or do they have to pay that themselves? So uh, what the project provided was that we, oh, Oliver, do you want to? Yeah, my clubhouse is closing down right now. So <laughs> once again, I have to go early, <laughs> sorry today. Thank you for being here, Oliver. Yeah, thanks for this, giving me the opportunity. Um, see you all some other time. Thank you. Um, yes, so uh, the, what we were given by the Fountain House New York was the WebEx licenses for all the clubhouses in Sweden for three years. So that was a big contribution uh, for, for, uh, for the project to even start, to, to have like a, a carrot for the clubhouses to, to, to become involved in the project. So this has been a huge difference, uh, but we don't have any, each clubhouse provides their own internet to the project and, and members from home, I don't think we have had that much of a, an issue with that, uh, so to speak, that most people have an internet connection, uh, but if it were, if it were to become an issue, then we would probably address it with uh, finding funds for it or, or uh, supporting individually. But it hasn't become an issue so far. Um, and the final question for today, what is the most important way to support members digitally during this uncertain time? I think that's for both groups. I can continue and start off with that. Um, I think that the biggest insight we made was that this takes time. We were really optimistic and, and 
positive about it ourselves and then we were kind of like oh not everyone are as interested as as we are so just humility and uh finding uh good solutions like in glengarry to to uh support um with sharing screens and like finding the technical uh supports for uh, supporting members i think that was a great inspiration for us yeah, uh, also to build on that, I would say that each member's uh, challenges are going to be unique, and so you have to address them individually. Uh, so as much as you can form sort of an overarching idea, still getting connecting with that member individually and uh, discussing with them and finding out what issues they might have is really the most important and uh, powerful part of helping them. And, and I'll just add, just uh, just lastly, is just that, you know, as, as um, you, you know, employing those same aspects of, of what we do in clubhouses, those, some of those similar philosophies of, of, you know, providing people with patience and understanding and respect and dignity, um, that it's not, it's not easy. It takes time. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it, it took a while to figure a lot of things out. And we're still obviously figuring things out. Um, and we had to have a lot of patience as people were trying to learn, as we were all trying to learn ourselves, uh, given the circumstances. So uh, I think the common philosophies of, of Clubhouse came in uh, and, and were really essential um, for us during this time. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you all so much for your great presentations, and thank you all so much for attending. Please join us next month for our next webinar where we'll explore the importance of coalitions, particularly for funding and advocacy during these tough times. Details to follow in the coming weeks. Question, please send an email to wanawebinar at fountainhouse.org. The PowerPoint for today's session will be sent directly to everyone in attendance and the recording will be made available next week. There will be a survey on screen once the event ends. Please take a moment to fill, out, fill it out to give us your feedback. Thank you for coming to the webinar. Please be on the lookout for announcements regarding our future webinars. Have a great day.